Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in on this video. Before we get started on the installation of the sway bar, uh, just wanted to let you know that I started this about five months ago, putting parts together in the basement when it was about minus 30 or 40 outside. Um, it just took so long because, well, there was no compressors in stock, that took a while to get in, and just figuring out little pieces here and there that the system's gonna require. But now it's all done. I got all the different videos put together and I'm uh, just gonna get them all set out in the right timeline for you. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any comments you'd like to add down below, I'm looking forward to hearing your uh, constructive criticism. So, all right, thanks, enjoy. Good morning, everyone. All right, so what we've got here, this is my latest Jeep build that we're gonna be working on. Okay, this is the sway bar out of a JK Rubicon. And what I'm going to be doing with this is installing it in my JK Sahara. Um, now you're probably all wondering why these electric ones are supposed to be horrible. Um, at least when they first came out anyways. Uh, I'm actually putting in a pneumatic actuator and I'm going to be putting in a whole uh, system for running that and eventually air lockers and everything. Uh, now it's minus I think 35 or something like that, minus 40 with the wind chill. So I brought this all down into my basement. <clears throat> uh, it's been here for a couple days warming up and because uh, we've got to use some gasket maker. Now things you're going to need for uh, this job is, well, you're going to have to find yourself a, uh, a used Rubicon uh, soy bar. And then you're also going to need the Team Tech Off-Road. This is the pneumatic sway bar actuator. Okay. So ordered that a couple weeks ago. And you're also gonna need some Permatex, the right stuff. Um, gasket and you know joint sealer. Okay. Alright. Uh, we're gonna put this together down here and we're gonna let the gasket um, cure. And then in a couple days uh, when the compressor comes in. Then we're going to start installing it all in the Jeep in Andrew's shop. All right, let's get to work. All right, so we've got a ratchet. Going to need extension. By the way, it's 15. Yep. All right. So this um, electronic sway bar that I got off of a Rubicon, I put an ad out on the Edmonton Jeep page on Facebook, asking if anybody had one in their shop. And luckily enough, um, I was looking for this and uh, also a Dana 44 front axle, but I was able to find this and uh, talked to the guy about it. He upgraded his, said he's never had any problems with it. So that is the electronic actuator. And I guess this is a seal that so many people have problems with. Actually, it must be this one here on the electronic side. Okay, so I got it cleaned off as best I could there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double check this jam nut here to make sure this doesn't come off while I have it all together. So it's a uh, 7 16 fitting in there, some vice grips. There we go. Okay, it's not all marred up or anything. Okay, and this is going to fit in there just like that using the old hardware. Next, I'm going to use the gasket maker. Good, thick, even bead all the way around. Have the hardware ready. And sit in there nice. Okay, now that those are all in there loosely, 
Uh, before we tighten it up, I just like to set it all in there. We know it's lined up properly. All right, that's good. Okay, now make sure it's squished out all the way around. Pretty good. Now I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. You can use soap or saliva. Just get it on there. And this keeps it from sticking to your finger. Kind of like when you do caulking in your bathroom or kitchen. Oops. That looks good. Alright. Now we're going to clean up and uh, yeah, we'll just leave this to cure until we get the rest of the parts put all together. Morning everyone. Alright, today getting started on uh, installing something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, you'll see in the background Jeep JK Sahara Edition. Um, hindsight, being 2020, wish I'd gotten the Rubicon, but uh, making do with what we got. So down here on the ground, this is the sway bar out of a Rubicon. Uh, quite a while ago, I put on the air actuator onto it, and got rid of the electronic solenoid, um, and was able to sell the solenoid for pretty much what I paid for the whole sway bar. So that worked out. Um, been waiting to get the the uh, compressor installed before installing the sway bar. So now that the compressor is up and running, we're gonna get this, uh, well, first we're gonna test it, make sure it all works, and then, uh, yeah, we'll get it installed. All right. Okay, so I got it plumbed into the compressor. I got the wires hooked up to the switch. We're just doing a test one right now. I know it looks messy. We'll clean this up after. So I want to make sure everything works before I get it looking too good. First, we're going to turn on the compressor and it should charge everything up. Then I'll hit the button for sway bar and it should open the cylinder and we'll hear, hear air rushing out. It's starting to rain so I think we're gonna close this up for a little bit because it's supposed to be a good storm coming all right doing another test so I've got this hooked into the air actuator on the sway bar I'm gonna run it see if it disconnects then I'll shut it off and see if it reconnects Okay, now we shut her off. Okay. I was worried about that. We gotta find a way of relieving air pressure. relocks up once you relieve the air pressure. So we are going to have to put in a pressure relief valve in this. Oh, back to Amazon. Welcome back everyone. Back to working on the uh, air actuated sway bar today. So as you can see, got the compressor in. It works. It's all wired up. Goes to the aux beam switches. Works good. Here we have the, this is an um, electronically actuated normally closed 12 volt solenoid. So turn on the compressor, then we 
turn on the solenoid and it engages the sway bar so that uh, it disconnects. Problem is, is when you shut off this switch, you want the sway bar to reconnect. So I did uh, some research and um, realized there's not a lot of videos that show this, but uh, so this one here is a normally closed and when you flick the switch, it turns to open, but you're also gonna need a normally open uh, pressure relief valve so that when you turn off the switch or when you turn on the switch, this one closes so the system is sealed. But when you turn off the switch, this one opens to relieve the pressure that's gonna be in this line here and the sway bar will lock again. Um, sorry, that's this here's the normally open uh, yeah, air relief valve. This one here is a uh, pressure regulator because this one here, uh, the ARB single uh, compressor is regulated between 130 and 150 PSI. But the air actuator for the sway bar that I got, they recommend don't go above 70 PSI. So we have to step down the pressure down to about 70 PSI. So we're gonna be putting that together and uh, we gotta figure out where we're gonna mount all this because I don't want it all hanging off the end of the compressor here. So first let's open these and take a look at the tools or the parts we got. All these parts will be uh, in the description down below. Um, I just got these off of Amazon. ARB sells their own solenoid, but uh, I think it's about $80. This one's 20. All right, there is our pressure relief valve. And it says these are good for air, water, diesel, all kinds of stuff. So we're just gonna be using it for air. And this is our pressure regulator. Some assembly required. Ah, nice, even comes with Teflon tape. There should be the gauge. Yeah, there's the gauge. Cool. So, same as last time, we're going to test fit everything together and we are going to test run the sway bar before I take the one off my Jeep and put this one on. I want to make sure everything works good. So, we'll get this all laid out and ready to go. Okay, so I think I got this all figured out now. So the two solenoids, one's normally uh, normally closed, the other's normally open, are wired into the same switch. I thought this was an inline relief valve, it's not. So it needs its own separate line because it's gonna relieve pressure out the side. Uh, could have just used a normal solenoid for that, I guess. So we have pressure coming out of the, uh, the compressor goes through the regulator, which will be set to about 70 PSI is what they call for the uh, actuator for the sway bar. Here's the solenoid that is normally closed. So when you actuate, uh, activate the, uh, the switch for the sway bar, this will open. At the same time, this will close. And all the pressure will come down and it'll go this way. Down to the sway bar here. Then, when I turn off the sway bar switch, all that pressure, this here is gonna close, this is gonna open, and it's gonna relieve all the pressure, and the sway bar should lock back up. So, uh, let's get this camera set, and we will test run it. Here we go. Compressor, and then the sway bar. There's a little bit of a leak in there. We'll find that later. So I'm seeing this all works. Nice. All right. So that part works. Now let's lock it back up. Pressure's relieved. We can turn off the compressor now. 
off. And it locked back up. Nice. All right. Now we've got to figure out, this part will be easy to install, but we've got to figure out where to put all the rest of that stuff and make it look nice and neat. All right. So what I've been working on here lately is trying to figure out how to mount everything underneath the hood so it's good and solid. So for mounting the pressure relief valve, it's a little bit heavier. I didn't want it all stacked up hanging off of the compressor. I've made this little guy here and it's gonna mount on the side of the, uh, the relay box for the, the aux beam switches. So I'm just going to file it down a bit Reinforce the corner with a little bit of uh, um, just scrap metal that I had laying around. I'll just weld that in there and uh, yeah, should be good and paint it up after. Okay, guys, so another thing I'm doing with this air system here is trying to get a better seal with this tubing and the push connectors like this. Okay. The way these work, if you don't know, you take the end of your tubing, just push it in, a little teeth grab, and it's in there. Push on the collar, pull it back out. Now, the tubing is a little on the small side, so you get these tiny little leaks. It's one thing I learned is take a punch, some say a quarter inch punch, but uh, I have one and I couldn't get it to fit in. So I use this tapered punch here. Um, I recommend practicing on a couple pieces first. And you just quickly, lightly heat it up a little bit, not too much or else the end will start to curl. And then quickly put the tapered punch in there, just a little bit to spread it out and make the end just a little bit bigger. Wait for it to cool down, looks good. You can see it's a little bit bigger now. And it's pretty tight fit in there now. It still comes out. So I'm gonna do that on all the ends of this and uh, make sure I get a good seal on it. Good morning guys, it's next day. So I got that bracket all painted up and uh, ready to use now. It's nothing too fancy. So I just put in this little corner piece here to strengthen it. Um, it's gonna be bolted down to the box for the aux beam switches. And then uh, the pressure relief valve will be bolted to the other side there. It's just one inch flat steel and uh, yeah, MIG welded together and then ground down and then painted. All these little parts that I make, I, uh, I just paint them red and kind of accent the Jeep, even though it's under the hood. All right, let's get installing this. I don't know how much we'll get done today. I've been getting some awesome storms lately. Really good thunder and lightning rolling through. So for all this little right. hardware and stuff, I put all the links down below. I just went into Canadian Tire and picked up some stuff. The, uh, the screws that fit into these here are machine screws, so an M5-0.8 by 10, and they fit in there pretty good. Also just got some little washers that fit. Um, I'll try and find the, uh, find out what these are. They're just hardware I had in my toolbox.
All right, I'm gonna do a test run now. First thing we'll do is turn on the compressor and uh, see how bad the leaks are. hear one in here somewhere. Jeez, every time. Uh, that's a pretty bad leak. All right. Okay, all the nuts and bolts are in. Now I'm just gonna torque them all up and uh, we'll hook up the air system. See you in a bit. Well, it's all plumbed and wired in. We got the uh, single stage ARB compressor here. It uh, comes out through the air regulator, which takes it down to 70 PSI. Goes through the solenoid, which turns on the air. Air comes out, splits. Uh, one side goes to the pressure relief valve over here. And the other line goes down underneath and right there to the air actuated sway bar disconnect now just got to get out on a trail and test it everyone thanks for following along that was the installation of the pneumatically actuated sway bar disconnect out of a rubicon into a sahara um, sorry it's taken so long to get it done this was months in the making ordering little pieces here and there finally glad to have it all done if you have any comments please leave them down below i'm looking forward to hearing all the feedback and other ideas things that can tweak it and change it and now we just have to go test it see you on the trail <laughs>